When are we gonna understand that we are put on earth to love? Hello, and thank you for tuning in to my channel, Plutonian Priestess. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for tuning in again. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at PLT Priestess. Welcome to my very first pick a card reading on my YouTube channel. Today is the start of the new astrological year. It is the first day of Aries and it is the spring equinox today. And that denotes a new cycle for all of us. We are going into a new 12 zodiac month phase. Like the other new year on January 1st, we can use this new year as a time for intention setting and new beginnings and look at it as a new cycle and a new start. Today we are going to be asking spirit what can you expect for this next astrological year? Please choose one of the three piles. Make sure that you choose with your intuition uh, or the, the pile that speaks to you the most. Only choose one pile. This is pile one, pile two, and pile three. I'm going to give you a few minutes to go ahead and look at the cards and kind of decide. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and get started with group number one. I'll include stamp cards below so you can fast forward to each group if you don't want to watch all of them. Okay, let's begin with pile one. <clears throat> we have the Sagittarius card. Pluto. Storyteller, Totality, Suppression, we have the Eight of Wands, the Two of Cups, and we have Judgment. <clears throat> All right, let's see. It's a little bit of a glare on these cards, sorry. Let's see if I can lift the glare out. Here we go. So first off, we have the Sagittarius and the Pluto cards. So you could be uh, a Sag, Sun, Moon, Rising, or have other Sagittarius planets. You could also be uh, a Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, and also have Scorpio planets. Overall, some themes that we're going to be seeing this year, uh, especially with the Judgment card and Pluto here, is rebirth and we also have suppression. You might be someone who has felt suppressed in your past. Maybe you're someone that has been uh, felt, maybe you're someone who feels like you haven't had the ability to really be who you want to be and maybe you don't feel like you've been accepted. Maybe you don't feel like you're able to really do the things that you desire or attain the things you desire. Maybe you don't feel confident in yourself or feel confident in uh, who you truly are. Maybe you came from a home environment that wasn't good or maybe uh, you were in a bad relationship or a bad friendship, something like that. Something that made you feel alone and isolated in some kind of way. So we have the Eight of Wands here and the Eight of Wands is a card about taking action. And with the Eight of Wands, it can sometimes be a card that, that suggests conflict, fighting, or strife in some kind of way. But it is a card that is uh, pretty positive because it shows someone who is making an effort and giving their all and trying to make the situation different. And usually with the Eight of Wands, that person is successful in whatever they're aiming for. You know, we see we have Eight Wands going for the target. At least one of them is going to be successful and hit on their mark. And we also have the Sagittarius card. And the Sagittarius is uh, a sign that is very much about freedom. They are a sign that doesn't like to be fenced in. It's a sign that is all about uh, expansion, the big picture, philosophy, religion, uh, looking at the way the world works, looking at the way we function. And also Sagittarius is very much about uh, expansion 
finding the best of the best. So always looking for that grass is the greener on the other side. Very much trying to find true fulfillment. Uh, Sagittarius can be known for having very lofty ideals and very lofty uh, perceptions of what maybe their partner or their life should be. So we have the Two of Cups here, and the Two of Cups is traditionally known as a relationship card. Uh, it is known, it can be known as a marriage card, um, it can be known as new romance, dating, and maybe that is a possibility in your life, uh, but it also has a tone of healing to it. Uh, it could be maybe you are healing the relationship with yourself, maybe you are finding new love that brings healing to you, perhaps you are finding new friendship that will bring you healing this year and then we also have next we have the judgment card so with the judgment card we see these individuals I'm gonna try and get this a little closer to you so with the judgment card we can see these individuals rising out of these coffins to the call of the angel right <clears throat> And then we have the Pluto card here, Let me put it in the light, which is also ruled by Scorpio. And both Pluto uh, and the Judgment card are really going to be about rebirth. So maybe you are coming to the realization that you can no longer be the person that you were. Maybe you are coming to the realization that you have self defeating habits. Maybe you have limiting beliefs. Uh, maybe you are finding new spirituality. Maybe you are trying to change the way your love life goes. Maybe you're trying to change the way your love relationships go, but there's going to be a note of rebirth. And the thing about rebirth is sometimes it can be very painful because it requires us to let go, let go of people, situations, and it also forces us to face our inner truths that sometimes we try to hide from ourselves. And we have to face uncomfortable truths often and we have to go through uncomfortable phases and changes that we often don't like and this year could be really a year of rebirth and setting foundation for mass change in your life with the suppression card we also have totality and totality is a card that is all about living in the moment embracing the moment taking the risk and living in the light in these cards we can see kind of a theme of transformation that is coming out for you. We have suppression to totality. We have Sagittarius, which is all about expansion. We have Pluto, which is another card of transformation and rebirth. We have action oriented. We have relationships, new relationships, new healing, new ways to look at yourself. And then we also have the judgment card. And the judgment card is also about rebirth and facing our inner truths and really awakening and rising above. And then last but not least, we have the Storyteller card. And it says, Light attribute, ability to experience and express life through stories and symbols. Shadow attribute, making up tales that harm others. So Sagittarius, this kind of ties with the Sagittarius card, I think, too. Because Sagittarius can be known for kind of making up stories sometimes. Uh, they can very easily let their tongue get away with them because they are known to exaggerate. Just because they are ruled by Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion, right? So whatever Jupiter touches, it magnifies. And so with Sagittarius, sometimes their storytelling can be <laughs> expanded a little bit as well. But what this card is telling me is that you have a story to tell about yourself and you have a story that people are interested in listening to. You have gone through major change. You have overcome obstacles. You have gone through rebirth and transformation. And now because of that, you are going to have a story to share. You have things to tell. And this year is going to be really big about rebirth and finding a new way to approach your life and... <clears throat> overcoming really overcoming the things that previously held you back whether that was toxic relationships 
limiting self-beliefs, whatever it may be. And not only are you going to come out of this experience stronger and with a bigger picture, a better sense of spirituality, uh, you're also going to have a story to tell, a story to influence. And that's really important. And, you know, everyone says like, oh, everyone has a story to tell and all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. But your story is one that's really going to be something that is going to be impactful for people this year. So this year is not necessarily a year that screams, oh, you're going to get rich or, oh, this, that, or the other thing. But this is going to be really a good self-healing year. This is going to be a good year for looking within for you. This is going to be a year of reflection. It's going to be a year about coming out stronger, better, renewed, reflected, um, this could be a year to find new love. This could find, be a year to find new love within yourself. Um, and also it could be a year to really learn um, maybe how you want to communicate your story, how the things you've been through, how they can help inspire others and how you can be a role model for other people as well. So uh, thank you group one for watching. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you enjoyed it and this resonated with you, please like, share, comment below. Let me know what you thought and thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So we have Aries, Mars, Mediator, it's a little bit contradicting. <laughs> we have the Two of Wands, the Four of Pentacles reversed, the King of Wands, and then we have Exhaustion and Trust. Okay, for group two, uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right, so to start off, we have the Aries card. You may be a sun, Aries, sun, moon, rising, or have other Aries planets. We also have the Mars card as well, which is also Aries dominant. So we have very heavy Aries energy. Mm. So this is probably going to be a really busy year for you. This is a year that's going to call for a lot of action. We have Aries, we have Mars, we have Exhaustion. This is going to be, we also have two Wands cards, which are ruled by fire. So you might be a super fiery personality, but uh, this year is going to be is going to be needing a lot of active energy. It's going to probably be requiring a lot out of you. We have the Aries card, and Aries is known as being passionate, driven, inventive. They're the innovator, they're the go-getter. Um, they can rush into things very quickly. And then we have the Mars card, which rules our self-will, our determination, uh, our sex drive, how we go after the things we desire in life. And we have the Two of Wands here, and the Two of Wands talks about wanting more. So maybe you are someone who has already been successful in some way. Maybe you have a family business that was handed to you to work on, or maybe you have, have a degree in something and, uh, already or have a job already that pays the bills fine or takes care of business and stuff like that. But the Two of Wands is very much about wanting more, seeking more. So we have this man, he's holding the world in his hand and he's looking out above the ocean and he is desiring for more. He doesn't feel, feel quite late. He doesn't feel all the way fulfilled. And so the Two of Wands is a card about wanting to start either new business enterprises or new creative endeavors or uh, any new project really and and it is a very action oriented card and so this year you could be potentially putting in place a new business uh, you could have a new hobby maybe you are going back to school you are going to be potentially working towards your goals and making them an active reality in some way um 
The one thing you're going to have to be aware of this year is burnout. You will probably be really tired. You might feel overworked and overburdened. We had the exhaustion card here. We also have Mars, which is all about go, 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 right? It's our go power. It's all about what we want. And Aries is also a sign that is very prone to burnout. So you're going to need to be making sure that you are taking care of business, but also taking care of yourself this year very much. Um, so we have the four of pentacles reversed and upright. The four of pentacles is a card that talks about someone who is kind of miserly, someone who's kind of greedy, uh, someone who doesn't really want to open up their heart. They rather fill it with material things and security. And this card is reversed. So uh, what it means in this spread is that Perhaps your miserliness is getting in your way, getting in your way, but more likely than not, you're going to face some kind of setback or minor delay in your finances. And remember, you have the two of wands here, so you might be starting a new project or a new endeavor. And so the four of pentacles reverse tells you that there might be setbacks. Uh, you might have some financial losses. You might not, things might not go entirely to plan. But remember that the Two of Wands promises success. Although it is a card that says success in the future, it is coming, wait for it. It is a card that says you will be successful. And then we have the King of Wands here in that final position. And the King of Wands is going to be the master, I guess you could say, of the wand suit, right? So we started at two of the wands. We had our hiccups, our setbacks. Think of, you know, everyone has to go through certain failures, certain lessons in life, because those are the things that not only help build our character, but they are also the things that prepare us for bigger setbacks and bigger uh-ohs. And, you know, in life, there are small things that we come up upon that seem so big. And then in the future, one year, five years, ten years later, you're like, oh, that was nothing. I can't, You'll laugh at it, you know? And so look at these minor setbacks that you might face this year as growing pains because you are growing into the king of wands. So you're evolving from the two of wands into the king of wands. So be assured that success is yours. Don't be frightened. The king of wands is ruled by fire and it is someone who is very successful in creative endeavors, business endeavors. They are an executive. They are a leader. They are an entrepreneur. Success comes to them easily. They are confident in their abilities. They are a go-getter. Uh, if you have some anxieties or worries uh, during this year, just when you're facing your setbacks, uh, we have the trust card here and that card is really there just to remind you to trust the process, go with the flow, understand that everything worth having takes time and that there is a greater plan that is at hand and that is at work here. Um, we have the mediator card and the mediator card is uh, says, a gift for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and business life. Respect for both sides of an argument. So the shadow attribute is negotiating with an ulterior motive or hidden agenda, either personally or professionally. So you could be someone who maybe goes into law, you are someone who maybe is a counselor, you are someone who maybe uh, does tarot or deal with people, but you need to make sure that you are honoring both sides of yourself. That is the biggest part with the mediator, right? So we have, remember what I said about burnout, we have Mars and we have Aries. So you need to make sure that you're balancing your life correctly. Make sure that you're making time for yourself. Make sure that you're making time to rest, recoup, work out, eat healthy, have a social life, but don't give up on your careers. Trust the process that is at hand. And also, you are someone who there's a lot of fire energy here. So uh, the opposite of Aries is going to be Libra. And Libra is the ultimate mediator, right? They're the ultimate person. They're the ultimate compromiser. They're the sign of relationships and business partnerships and partnerships of all kinds. So try to channel maybe some of that Libra-ness and try to find some balance in your life and try to uh, use your sweet words maybe a little bit. And really, uh, I think balance is going to be really key to your success. I feel like if you are not 
taking care of yourself, that's what's going to be that setback for you. Because if you're not mentally where you need to be, emotionally where you need to be, and physically where you need to be, then you can't, uh, then your thoughts and your energy aren't properly aligned. And what you will be manifesting uh, in the rest of your life won't be of the caliber that you want, you know, so really take time this year to uh, take care of yourself and focus on your work and you balance the two and you will find that assured success. So thank you so much for watching group two. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, make sure to like and share as well as comment below. I love to hear from you. Uh, you can find me at PLT Priestess if you would like to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. All right, group three. Let's see what we got. All right, so we have the Capricorn card. We have Venus. Oops. Liberator. Letting go. Projections. I have the Ace of Swords reversed, Eight of Cups, and we have the Five of Cups reversed. Okay. <clears throat> so, right off the bat, I get the feeling that you might be someone who is going through or will go through some kind of breakup or some kind of loss in some kind of way. The, I feel like this is a romantic relationship. I really do. And the reason I say that is because we have Venus, but of course, but some of the other cards, and I'm going to get into that, but let's start off with, we have Capricorn here, so you could potentially be a Capricorn sun, moon, or rising, or have other Capricorn planets. We have Venus, so you could be a Libra or Taurus sun, moon, or rising, or have Libra or Taurus planets in your chart. <clears throat> um, you could also be going through... Uh, I want to say maybe you're going through a Saturn transit right now. You'll have to look at your chart and see what's going on to be exactly sure. Um, so we have the Ace of Swords reversed. And the Ace of Swords reverse warns that some kind of disruption or some kind of chaos is going to ensue. The Swords cards have to do with the air sign. And air signs usually have to do with communication. So this could be some kind of verbal fight. This could be uh, a choice that you make or someone else makes. But uh, ultimately, it doesn't end in necessarily the best outcome. And then after the Ace of Swords reversed, we have the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is all about uh, leaving behind what you had before. And as you see here, the Eight Cups, uh, they symbolize having fulfillment in some kind of way, whether that be financial fulfillment, emotional fulfillment, whatever. But this figure in red that you see here is actually moving on and embarking on a spiritual journey to find more. And the reason that is, is maybe for some reason they don't feel completely satisfied and they want to find their higher purpose or they want to find um, more meaning or they want to explore the other options that their life has to offer. And the reason that I think that maybe you are someone who is going through some kind of loss or uh, perhaps some kind or will be going through some kind of breakup is because we have uh, the Five of Cups reversed and typically the Five of Cups upright is we have a cloaked figure standing here staring at the Three Cups knocked over 
not acknowledging the two cups that are still full and it's a card about you know focusing on the negative crying over spilled milk is a common phrase that is tied to this card but when the card is reversed it talks about a loss or um an emotional loss or some kind of trial or tribulation that you're going through but this but unlike the upright position the person in this card you is it's actually a loss that you are going to recover from it's something that is going to make you stronger it's something that is going to be hard it's going to be challenging but that you are going to come out the victor and the reason i think that this might be a a love situation is because we have venus which is the planet of love of course but we have capricorn and capricorn is going to be the planet of karma perhaps you were involved in some kind of karmic relationship we you know we have the card of projections here projections can be a common issue with karmic relationships because when we enter karmic relationships we uh, are faced with shadow sides and of ourselves in the other person. We're often faced with uh, lessons, maybe past life connections. A lot of the time, karmic relationships bring out a lot of intense emotions in us and they bring out uh, an urge to heal. But if healing isn't, if both people are in healthy functioning positions, the relationship can turn unhealthy very easily. And uh, Capricorn is also a planet of longevity and it is also the planet of hard lessons and so when you have Capricorn and Venus together sometimes you are learning hard lessons in love and uh, right now we like I said we have projections so you might be dealing with trying to understand uh, what is true reality so when we deal with projections it can come from either party right so you can project onto someone else and other people can project onto you a lot of the time in karmic relationships, there is kind of a blur of lines, of boundaries, of emotions and feelings. And a lot of the times, uh, they can start out really great. You can feel really connected, really a really close spiritual bond, but it can turn go south very quickly. And that's because karmic relationships bring up that deeper side to you, that that need to heal, and you can uh, bring out the dark sides to other people as well especially if you are someone who is functioning on a higher vibration and you are involved with someone who is functioning on a lower vibration you can your light your energy can actually trigger a negative response in someone because some people are afraid to heal some people are afraid to face themselves because they are scared of what they will find you know a lot of people have to deal with shame or guilt and they are afraid to face the things that they have gone through and the thing is when we repress our emotions when we repress our feelings what happens is they they our subconscious brings them into our reality by either bringing people into our lives that bring out those emotions in you through projections or they'll bring out <clears throat> relationships that mirror the healing work that you need to do. So in this layout we also have letting go and this year is going to be really about focusing on moving forward, moving on, uh, letting go of the things that you have lost, letting go of maybe the people you have lost or the things that haven't gone your way. Remember, we have the Eight of Cups embarking on that spiritual journey, moving forward, trying to find more, looking within, going on, uh, turning turning from the past and what you knew before. And then we have, last but not least, we have the Liberator card. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, Light Attributes. Freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns, shadow attributes, imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate, ignoring legitimate constraints. So this could quite possibly be a very liberating year for you. Uh, Uranus is in Taurus right now and we have this Venus card so if you are a Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio, or Leo right now you are facing a seven year period uh, of change. Uranus is a planet of liberation. It comes in, it shakes things up, and it frees you from the restrictions that you had previously. So 
your spiritual journey is really going to be about letting go so you can feel liberated again and get closer to your true path. And it may be feel like it may seem like this is an emotionally challenging year for you, but overall, at the end of it, you're going to look back and you're going to realize that you were embarking on a path to better your emotional and spiritual self so you can have a more fulfilling life and more fulfilling relationships. You're probably someone who cares about security, cares about the longevity, what the long-term plan is. You want someone you can depend on, someone who's going to be there for you, but you also care about, you know, love. You care about being romantic. You care about that connection. And maybe for some reason you haven't been finding those fulfilling connections. So it's time for you to do some inner work, release what has not been serving you, look within so you can recover from projections. Because maybe projections is something that has been holding you back in your previous uh, relationships. Maybe there was some healing work that you need to do that was be coming into play into your relationships and now is the time to reflect upon that and look forward. And even though it is going to be a little bit of an emotionally challenging year for you, you are going to rise above it. You're going to rise above uh, this loss or emotional turmoil that you're going through and you are going to find happiness and fulfillment in the end. So I wish luck to you in this year to come. Uh, if you feel like this reading resonated, please like, share, and comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you can follow me at PLT Priestess. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see gonna you again. Keep going on. War gonna keep going on. Frustration gonna keep going on. Ain't gonna keep going on till we finally go back down to the simplest word. Love.